<laughs> My name is Paul Votes, and uh, I'm with the uh, the Policy Institute uh, here at the University of Manitoba, and we're we're the the co-hosts of, of tonight's event. Uh, thanks everybody for for taking the time to to come out on on, on an evening. Actually, I guess it's probably a, actually a good evening for an indoor meeting, <laughs> the weather we've been having. But uh, but it's a very important topic, and uh, and obviously by just by the turnout and, and by seeing uh, the, the the people who have come out, uh, I think we're we're going to have a very good discussion. Um, let me just uh, describe uh, how we're going to proceed, uh, and now I'm going to try and get away out of the way as, as quickly as possible because we have quite a few people who have uh, a great deal of expertise to share. Uh, our, our topic tonight is uh, is Lake Winnipeg, and specifically, uh, it's going to be focused on the idea uh, of uh, an IJC reference um, under the, uh, the the Canada U.S. Uh, Boundary Water, Waters Treaty, focusing on uh, nutrient management uh, within the Red River Basin uh, due to its impacts on on Lake Winnipeg. Uh, so you can judge whether you're here for the right <laughs> uh, topic or not. Um, we have quite a distinguished panel, and I'm going to give uh, very brief bios, uh, but in each case, uh, all of these people could, uh, uh, could have a, a bio that would, uh, would take quite a, quite a while to, um, uh, to detail. Uh, but I'll, in, in, in introducing the, uh, the various participants, uh, I'll also uh, describe a little bit about their, their role tonight. Uh, first of all, Norm Branson, uh, who is the, uh, the former Deputy Minister of, of several uh, uh, government departments and uh, provincial governments in Manitoba, including uh, uh, his last posting, Deputy Minister of Water Stewardship, uh, will be giving a, an introduction to the overall topic. Uh, he'll be followed by uh, Colleen Squar, who's uh, with the, the Lake Friendly Accord and currently a master's student at uh, the University of, of Winnipeg. Um, and she will be followed by uh, Bob Sanford, who is the author of, of Saving Lake Winnipeg, uh, he's uh, he's visiting us from from Alberta, but he does that uh, quite often given the the interest that he's taken in the, in the issues of, of Lake Winnipeg, um, and he will be followed then by um, Dr. Murray Clayman uh, from McGill University, uh, who actually has uh, 30 years of experience, uh, including uh, uh, a very direct experience, like 12 years um, as the uh, as the Canadian uh, secretary uh, to uh, to the IJC uh, process, and he will be outlining uh, the main focus of, of the discussion, which will be the idea of, of an IJC reference. Um, then, conducted by Norm, we'll, we'll actually move into a little bit of a panel discussion uh, that will include uh, Alex Salki uh, from the Lake Winnipeg Foundation and Chris Hutlett from the Red River uh, Basin Commission and, and get into a little bit more of the detail uh, around uh, what a reference would entail and what would be the arguments uh, for, for doing a reference. So without uh, any further uh, introduction, I will simply call up Norm Branson to get things started. Well, good evening, everybody, and um, I'd like to first start by thanking the Manitoba Institute for Policy Research for uh, certainly organizing this meeting and co-hosting it with the Forum for Leadership on Water. Uh, the Institute is really doing great work in raising public awareness about the Lake Winnipeg issue, and this is one in a series of events that uh, they're sponsoring to do just that. Uh, a short word on the Forum for Leadership on Water, flow. Uh, this group of uh, 12 volunteers from across Canada was first drawn together by the Gordon Foundation to draw upon the uh, quite varied experience of these folks across the country uh, to uh, analyze and, and critique federal water policy. And it uh, resulted in a publication called uh, Changing the Flow, which actually was quite well received and, and fairly widely circulated. And the group uh, subsequently decided to um, stay on as sort of uh, water policy gadflies and uh, with some assistance or continued assistance from the Gordon Foundation and uh, the uh, RBC Blue Water Program, uh, we've continued to comment and, and follow water issues of national significance and hence that leading to our interest in Lake Winnipeg. Uh, as an introduction to what you'll be hearing this evening, uh, there are a few facts that I think you should know as, as background, and I think probably most of you do know them. Very briefly, of course, Lake Winnipeg is a severe eutrophication problem resulting in 
massive blooms of toxic algae and, and oxygen depletion. And the nutrients flowing off land from municipal and agricultural sources are the root cause of this problem. More than half of these nutrients, however, originate outside the province of Manitoba. And the vast majority of the total nutrients flowing into the lake funnel right up the Red River. And about two-thirds of the nutrients that originate in the Red River Valley originate south of the international boundary. And finally, it's important to remember that the Red River is a boundary water under the Canada-U.S. Boundary Waters Treaty of 1909. As you know, of course, the Lake Winnipeg drainage basin is huge and it covers parts of four provinces and four states. And it's clear because more than half the nutrient loading comes from outside the province that cooperation between these jurisdictions is going to be absolutely fundamental if we are going to solve the water quality problem on Lake Winnipeg. Now there's been some really positive developments recently concerning cooperation of, of these various jurisdictions and, and groups that are active throughout the basin. And uh, as uh, Paul had indicated, uh, Colleen Sklar is going to give us an update on uh, the Lake Friendly Accord, which uh, is, is a uh, initial run at, at bringing these interests together in the basin. Uh, Bob Sanford, a flow member, is uh, going to follow with giving us some information on circumstances in the Red River Valley that really are going to affect Lake Winnipeg in the immediate future and, and for many years to come. And there's some new science and new evidence that uh, is, is very interesting uh, that, that bears on the prognosis for Lake Winnipeg in the longer term. And then we'll get on to the main focus of the evening. And flow member Murray Clayman, uh, whose rich background uh, Paul very briefly outlined for you earlier and his long connection with the International Joint Commission is going to take us through some of the history of the Boundary Waters Treaty. He's going to talk as well about the past and present work of the International Joint Commission and present a case for a Joint Canada-U.S. reference under the Boundary Waters Treaty to the International Joint Commission on the Red River and Lake Winnipeg. Finally, uh, flow members and, and led by Murray have prepared a draft of what such a reference might actually look like, what it would contain and, and the direction that might be given the International Joint Commission if they were to be given and proceed with such a reference. Now, for anyone who's unsure of the value of this proposed reference, uh, I ask you to recall the reference that was made to the IJC subsequent to the 1997 flood of the century in the Red River Valley. The result of that reference was a series of very positive, very common sense and well thought out recommendations that resulted in enormous benefits for all of the jurisdictions in the U.S. and Canada and the Red River Valley. If you recall, an, an enormous amount of, of federal funding from both national governments went into flood prevention and flood mitigation works. And in fact, the IJC report that resulted from that reference was really the key document, the key driving force that resulted in the expansion of the Greater Winnipeg Floodway, from which, of course, we benefit to this day. Now, what, what might a reference actually result in in this particular case? Well, uh, maybe give this some thought. Maybe it could result and a Red River Basin water quality agreement that's an analogous to the Great Lakes water quality agreement. And, and of course, everyone I think is aware of the enormous benefits that accrued from that particular agreement. And that's not unreasonable given that we refer to, and, and in fact it is the case, that Lake Winnipeg is the sixth Great Lake. Now, after Murray uh, goes through his, his presentation and presents this case for an IJC reference, as Paul indicated, we're going to uh, have a very quick reaction to that concept from uh, three panel members, uh, Bob, Christine, and Alex. So that sort of sets the table for what we're going to do tonight. So uh, with that, I'd like to call on Colleen to 
come up and give us a bit of an update on uh, the Lake Friendly Accord. Thank you.